Hi, this is Tony from the UNR Writing and Speaking Center. Active versus passive voice is often explained using a single sentence like Sam hit the ball, which is active, compared to the ball was hit by Sam, which is passive. You can see how active voice puts the emphasis on the actor Sam, and passive voice emphasizes the object, the ball. It's a common misconception that active voice is superior to passive voice. Although active voice is more effective in many situations, passive voice also serves an important function. We almost never write single sentences that stand by themselves. Instead, our sentences interact with one another to create a larger text. A balance of active and passive voice will make your writing clear, cohesive, and natural. Let's look at an example where active and passive voice work together. Scientists who study the Earth's climate are gravely concerned about climate change. Not only are greenhouse gases from human activity trapping heat and warming the planet, the rising temperatures are damaging Earth's natural mechanisms for regulating its temperature. Our planet is kept cool by the polar ice caps, as well as forests and coral reefs, all of which are threatened by rising temperatures. Polar ice caps reflect solar energy away from Earth, and forests and coral reefs absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. As climate change causes ice caps to melt and kills forests and coral reefs, scientists believe warming will accelerate. As you can see, the majority of these sentences are in active voice. They're about a subject doing an action. Greenhouse gases trap heat. Temperatures are damaging. Ice caps reflect. But this sentence is in passive voice. The shift to passive voice marks a transition in the paragraph. It continues the train of thought from the sentence before it, as our planet is kept cool, connects to natural mechanisms for regulating its temperature. And in doing so, it shifts from discussing climate change in general to a specific issue, how the Earth regulates its temperature. By calling back to the sentence before it, the passive construction bridges the gap between two subjects, keeping the writing cohesive and natural. But what about this first sentence? It only has a linking verb, are. No one is doing anything, so is it active or passive? Well, when dealing with linking verbs, it's not helpful to think of them as active or passive. With these kind of sentences, you should focus on whether or not it clearly conveys the idea you want it to. If it doesn't, then consider how it would look if you made it active or passive. I could make this active by adding an action verb. Scientists who study the Earth's climate are expressing grave concerns about climate change. But this doesn't really do much besides add two words. Why add extra words if I don't need to? Well, what if I make it passive? Grave concerns about climate change are being expressed by scientists who study the Earth's climate. We're still basically saying the same thing, but the focus is now on grave concerns instead of the scientists who are lending credibility to what I'm saying. Looking at my three options, the original sentence most efficiently says what I wanted to say, so I'm going to keep it. Active voice is often the best choice for conveying your ideas directly, and it emphasizes a subject doing an action. However, passive voice serves an important function as well. Passive voice calls back to previous ideas, and this is critical to maintaining cohesion in your writing. Passive voice also emphasizes the result of an action, and sometimes that is exactly what you want to emphasize. Understanding the pros and cons of active and passive voice will help you know when to use what approach and how to use them together to create clear and cohesive writing. 